Wikisite uh, discussion series. This series is brought to you by um, IFLA um, and Wikisite. And we are grateful to uh, both IFLA and the Wikisite project and the Wikimedia Foundation for funding to uh, bring this series to you. Um, this uh, series of discussions was intended to be um, in person. Uh, as part of the IFLA meeting uh, that was to happen in Dublin in August 2020. Um, and we have moved this uh, series uh, to an online format due to the um, uh, ramifications of uh, COVID-19. We're really delighted uh, today to bring uh, to you a discussion on um, early adoption of uh, Wikidata for use in libraries. And, um, this discussion is brought to you by the IFLA Wikidata Working Group. This is a working group that was formed in late uh, 2019 to explore and support the adoption of Wikidata and Wikibase in the library community, specifically looking at um, issues around library systems um, and metadata standards and schemas. Uh, today, the talk uh, we are, are engaging in is entitled Wikidata and Digital Transformation in Libraries. Um, and with us today, we have Jason Evans. And Jason Evans is the National Wikimedian at the National Library of Wales. For several years, Jason has worked as a Wikimedian in residence and has managed several government funded projects to improve content on the Welsh language Wikipedia. He works to advocate for open access within culture, the culture sector by openly sharing library data and demonstrating the benefits to the organization and the public. He has hosted uh, dozens of Wikipedia edit-a-thon events and managed a number of volunteer projects to enrich and reuse open data content. Jason is a regular contributor to digital heritage conferences with a particular interest in linked open data. Also joining us today is Simon Cobb. Simon Cobb works as a research in research services at the University of Exeter. He has worked closely with the National Library of Wales on their Wikidata project since 2016, when he was appointed as the first ever Wikidata visiting scholar. Um, and today we're going to uh, engage in this topic through a series of um, questions and answers. And so I'm going to start off by uh, talking or sort of setting the scene for um, Wikidata. So uh, this question uh, is for Simon. So why did you, oh, uh, why did you begin to work with Wikidata and what opportunities did you see? So I first started working with Wikidata um, after attending an event that Jason had organised at the National Library of Wales in November 2015 and I hadn't even heard of Wikidata until um, attending this event. I went along and Jason was demonstrating how you can visualise data on a timeline or you can browse it thematically. Um, it was all very well, it's very new and I just immediately started thinking about how we could apply this to library collections um, as to explore um, and browse data and um, browse the collections in ways that are currently difficult. Um, after the event, I went away and started experimenting. Pretty much everything I tried failed. It was just, I was trying to oversimplify things. Um, but that started the learning process where I became involved with Wikidata um, I started to work with a collection of photographs that was in um, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons that Jason had uploaded. Um, this was the John Thomas photograph collection. I started creating structured data in Wikidata and went from there, really. So, yeah, I think for, from my point of view, um, we initially saw Wikidata as a platform for just making our content, um, our data available openly. Uh, with the aim of just increasing visibility and accessibility and it was only a little bit later that we started to consider the enrichment and the reuse and the round tripping uh, potential so it didn't take us that long to start to say hang on there's a lot of a lot of possibilities here and a lot of that was thanks to the work that uh, simon started doing with this so a couple of examples really stand out for me kind of early on um, i remember mapping place name tags 
from library metadata to the entities for those places on Wikidata. And magically, all of a sudden, we had access to coordinates for those places. So we could view things on a map. Um, we could organize content by place, uh, whether that's a town or a city or a county. And the second example that kind of blew my mind was when we took our metadata for a collection that was only available in English, put it into Wikidata. And because of that process, we were then able to access the Welsh language labels that already existed for items in Wikidata and view almost the entire collection in Welsh, um, which kind of blew my mind a bit and really sort of opened up the uh, the possibilities of what we could do with it. Um, well, I think that's that's really fascinating. I think we're going to pick up a little bit more on this later. But um, can you tell us a little bit, Jason, about how you convinced uh, decision makers that this was an initiative that that needed to be supported with um, time and resources? So the hardest part, really, of convincing administrators was actually just trying to explain what Wikidata was and what it did um, and why it was important. It was actually far easier to convince um, the, the library to share their data openly than it was to share their image collections openly. There just seems to be less fear around sharing data, perhaps, than, than there are for, for visual images. Um, but the great thing with Wikidata is that the, the barrier for entry is actually really low. It, you can start with creating a single item manually um, and in terms of technical ability and so on, the, the barrier there is really low. Um, and then you can produce case studies around very small collections um, and, and start to show the benefits and really encourage more engagement. And that worked for us in terms of uh, piquing the interest of, of management at the library. So, um, and then how did you um, move to creating this position for the Wikidata Visiting Scholar? Because as we heard, this was the, I think, the first ever we know of in the, in the world, which is pretty impressive. Um, and then to sort of follow up, um, would you recommend this route to others or, or what could others do to, to bring this into being? Okay, so I came across this model of a visiting scholar at the Wiki, Wiki Education Foundation. Um, and that was obviously for Wikipedians. So I actually worked with them and we adapted this model that they were already running for Wikidata. And, and as you say, it was the first time that this had been done in the world as far as we are aware. And we did it really as a way of expanding our capacity to share content. And Simon's knowledge of Wikidata meant that uh, we could develop better Wikidata more efficiently and, and discover better ways of mapping our data to, to Wikidata. And also like by formalizing his association with the library, it made it easy to support him in the work that he was already doing anyway. He was already interested in this work and, and, and working with our collections. So by doing this, we gave him access to data and advice from archivists and catalogers at the library. And when we started working with Wikidata, there was very little documentation. Uh, so we had to kind of make it up as we went along and, and learn as we went in terms of how we how we actually share and do the mass uploads and, and share the data. Um, now there's a data import hub and there's a lot more volunteers and professionals as well who can kind of help with this process. But it did feel a little bit like the, the Wild West when we started. Um, so one of the big projects that Simon worked on first was developing data for the Welsh book trade. So things, um, items for printers, publishers, booksellers in Wales. Um, and this really started to tie together different elements in our collection. And this was the initial spark really for our involvement with Wikisite, um, which later led to this project to share tens of thousands of bibliographic records on Wikidata. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, so having Simon as a partner really has been key to, to, to all this Wikidata work that we've done. And I don't think we'd have accomplished half of what we have without his skills and his, and his, his hard work. 
So I would definitely recommend this approach to, to any organization looking to, to share their data on Wikidata. That's great. And um, Simon, I, I wonder if you could share with us a little bit how, how, what your experience was like um, in, in this position. So being a visiting scholar, obviously it's been an opportunity for learning, um, which has been great. But one of the main benefits for me has been the ability to get credit for my work, which can often be difficult as a Wikimedian. Um, for example, if you write a Wikipedia article, you can't really put it on your CV as a piece of written work. It's just something that's online and to some extent it's anonymous. But with this project as, and as the visiting scholar, I've completed projects which have outputs and documentation and I can put this on my CV. Um, and that's a real benefit because it is a big project. I've committed a lot of time to it and I'm quite happy with the results, if I'm honest. Um, so I've been developing skills all along and I've um, had opportunities to talk at conferences. I've engaged with the community and I've just learned a lot. So it's been a fantastic experience and opportunity for me. And if you'll allow me one, one little um, follow up question, do you think um, this is something that is of specific benefit maybe to early career uh, people in the library profession? Um, in terms of getting that experience for for CVs um, and being able to take those experiences into the into the job market, I think so. Yeah, I see it like that. Um, it could be for someone who's um, in the final stages of their studies and um, they're about to enter the job market and they want a project to put on their CV, or it could just be someone who's interested and they want to build their skills. I think. Um, Whoever it is, they need to be committed because it's going to take over their life to some extent. That's when your leisure time, it blends into like everything you do. Uh, yeah, I think that's very one, much one so. of the, the dangers of, of uh, getting involved in the Wikimedia community is you see all those opportunities for like, oh, I should take this picture. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so, true. I can relate to that. <laughs> um, and sort of to move into a little bit of discussion around. Um, you know, I, I love to talk about about metadata and and cataloging. I think I think everyone uh, on our on our group um, certainly does. Um, but where do you see uh, sort of the connections? And I think I, I you know I might refer to it as more traditional, but maybe more mainstream or or standard ways of uh, metadata work or documenting collections um, and Wikidata. And then to follow on that. Uh, where do you think opportunity lies in, in leveraging current trends in uh, metadata work in libraries and, and Wikidata? So the most visible connections between library metadata and Wikidata are in the external identifier properties. Um, in Wikidata, we have many authority files for SORI, library catalogs, which have a Wikidata property. Um, and a persist persistent identifier for a record um, such as a subject heading or a bibliographic work, um, it will have a formatter URL and that creates a link between Wikidata and the authority on the library's website. Um, many libraries and other cultural institutions have recognised the value of Wikidata as an authority control hub um, that's storing the traditional authorities alongside identifiers from other um, online sources, such as national bibliography, sorry, national biographies, um, and just other websites which um, are informative but maybe wouldn't be considered for use in an authority file. Um, some of the libraries that have um, that are responsible for the major authority files such as the Library of Congress or the German National Library have been contributing to Wikidata so we have a large number of their authorities in, in Wikidata already. Um, Wikidata has become this hub through a combination of editing practices. The first is automated bot editing, um, which can, for example, import multiple identi identifiers based on the existence of another identifier. So, for example, if we have the VIAF identifier for a, a subject heading, we can a bot can use that and harvest all of the other identifiers that are in VIAF bring them into Wikidata and we can start collecting them in that way. Um, the second way that we can build up a 
collection of identifiers is through large batch editing and some people have done very large batches with Library of Congress um, subject headings for example um, and that's just for, for um, they're getting a list and they're basically reconciling it against Wikidata items and adding the identifiers to them and we also have editors who are working on this manually and for a process of curation they're um, adding more and more identifiers so we're building up this huge collection um, across subjects and we continue to do that as well we're growing all the time with new properties being added through a community process of um, proposal of a property um, a feature of Wikidata which is very beneficial when we're working with uh, persistent identifiers is the ability to retain deprecated identifiers. Um, this helps us to track um, when a persistent identifier has been withdrawn or re redirected to another identifier, if it's been a process of merging duplicates, which happens all the time. Um, by keeping the ones that are deprecated, we can um, always track and people can use that for their own redirection if they've got an identifier in their metadata rather than just losing that when the merging is made. Um, an area where there's a real benefit for um, Wikidata for contributions from libraries is the class structure. Because this is an area where libraries have always worked with the subject headings with the broader and narrower terms. And this is just excellent for providing the structure that we need all of the queries that can search through a class structure and get all the subclasses rely on um, this curation to have been been done in Wikidata. So I would really encourage librarians to get involved in, in that if that's their um, area of interest because we do need that work to continue to have these well curated classes. In Wikidata, one of the main out outputs of the Wikisite initiative is um, a corpus of over 25 million scholarly papers. Um, librarians can also get involved in, in this. It's an obvious area for librarians to contribute, um, particularly if they're involved in the management of institutional or open access repositories. We have a property for adding full work to um, our collections of data about these publications. So if they have the open access version in their repository, they can link that up and that really contributes to our work. I think um, one area where librarians might be able to draw on Wikidata is some of the toolings that the community are developing. Um, for example, we have an excellent author disambiguator tool that's been developed by a member of the community. Um, and this uses the contextual information that's contained in items related to both authors and publications to try and identify publications that belong to the same author. And I think anyone who's worked with uh, bibliographic data will know the challenges that we'd face normally in that area. I see um, real benefits in for libraries from linked open data. I think um, a lot of libraries are coming on board to that already and um, starting to explore the possibilities. But I'm also curious about what possibilities knowledge graphs offer to libraries in the future. It's not an area that I've done a great deal of work on exploring, but um, I think it's one that I'll be keeping my eye on. That's great, Simon, thanks. I think that um, certainly I know in uh, my library and I'm sure many around the world, the, the situation um, now of, of finding online materials makes, um, when so many libraries are closed, makes it particularly or shows how important it is to ensure that we have uh, open access materials and being able to find those materials are particularly important. So I think highlights the real value in um, using uh, Wikidata for um, uh, citation data or publication data. Indeed. So, yeah, so that's, that's really um, great. So all of these opportunities, I'm going to turn it, oh, turn it over to Jason um, a little bit to talk about, you know, given the amount of work or uh, time that um, uh, the National Library of Wales has, has um, 
put in working with Wikidata, if you can reflect a little bit on the kinds of resources that are required, um, you know, technical people, um, training, just to think about how if um, libraries uh, want to get more involved or, or to move in some of these areas, um, what uh, that might take. Um, and then I want to follow up a little bit on that around where you think the most impact is. I think um, Simon highlighted a number of, of really important areas as well, but um, you know, there's a range of kinds of libraries where different kinds of collections or resources might be, might be considered. Okay, so you definitely want to have people on board who like working with data. I think that's 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 a must really because there's the, not everyone um enjoys working with data like like perhaps we all do <laughs> um so i think that's key um and i think some form of experience or knowledge in processing big data would be beneficial um but once you get an idea of how wikidata works it's technically not that hard to start on a small scale um and working on a small scale kind of teaches you how to start scaling that up. But to share more complex data sets like catalog records for books um, with rich data about authors and publishers, um, you, it would help to have someone like Simon or, or several Simons with a knowledge of, of OpenRefine, maybe Python, um, but also an understanding of the bigger picture in terms of other useful data sources that are out there, useful tools that are available, um, how you can leverage perhaps OCLC data or, or, or VIAF data. That's, that's the kind of skills that I think you'd be looking for um, for this kind of work. I know that the, um, the National Library of Sweden as well, who've done a lot of work um, around sharing their bibliographic data to Wikidata have taken a slightly different approach to us. Um, and they've um, produced BibFrame2 data um, as a starting point and then uh, map that to Wikidata. So there's, there's different kind of approaches you can take um, depending on the skills that you've got available. But again, they work closely with their local Wikimedia chapter on, on doing that work. So I think having someone from, with experience of the Wikidata side of things uh, would definitely be a, be a help. Um, so in terms of kind of impact um, and some of the best collections to, to share, I'm gonna share some slides with you now. Okay, so um, we started with data for visual content that we'd already shared to Wikimedia Commons. And this, this was quite a, a good way of getting quick wins and seeing some really kind of big impact and some, um, some really good data enrichment. So, there's also, with, with Wikidata, the documentation is better in some areas than others at present. Um, and there is quite good documentation for artworks on, on Wikidata. So we, decide, we decided to start with, with that kind of work. Um, and as a result of this work, it was possible to query and explore the data in new ways. The data was really enriched, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Um, if I can move the slide. And this work eventually led to the creation by a volunteer of a proof of concept website for exploring our visual collections as linked data. And this is powered entirely by Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons. And it's a fantastic way of showing the benefits of having structured data as opposed to sort of standard metadata um, in the ways that you can query and explore um, a collection. But as we shared more and more data, we also started seeing really interesting connections forming between our collections. So for example, our Dictionary of Welsh Biography data was being connected to sitters and artists in the visual collections that I've just spoken about, to authority files, to scribes and authors of books and manuscripts that we'd been sharing, and people connected to the Welsh book trade, where Simon had already shared a lot of data. Um, and there were also really interesting um, connections to external sources. So as you can see here, we 
found through the use of the identifiers on Wikidata that uh, people in our data collection also had Oxford DMB entries. They also had portraits in the National Portrait Gallery. And Wikidata kind of acted as a, as a hub, as a pathway for giving us access to these sources. Um, and then Simon then started creating Wikidata for Welsh newspapers and journals making lots of connections again with the Welsh book trade data. And then this led probably to our biggest challenge, which was the sum of all Welsh literature project, which I kind of touched on earlier. So the aim of this is to share the entire Welsh bibliography. Um, but we started with around 30 to 40,000 of the, the easier um, data items or the easier books. Um, met, namely the ones that had um, identifiable publishers, uh, because there's a lot of very small publishers, especially historically when you go back, that made, made some of that work quite difficult. Um, and I kind of worked on matching and creating some of, the work, some of the publishers that you see here for the collection, and, and Simon had the unenviable task of trying to match as many authors as possible from the data to people that were already in Wikidata, um, and, and using third-party data to try and match up and create new items for authors as well, so that we had as many authors as possible um, for that data. Um, and in terms of the impact of this work of sharing bibliographic data, there's been an immediate impact in terms of research and the fact that we can query the data in really interesting ways. For example, um, as you can see here, you can look at the pattern of where authors were born around the world. Uh, we can look at publishers and really drill down into the, the makeup of where publishers are located throughout the country. Um, and we can look at the output of individual publishers over time and look at the frequency with which they're publishing, how many authors were they publishing at any given period in time. So there's a lot of really interesting research that you can, you can start to do. But in a way, this work is really just an investment in Wikisite, the idea of, of Wikisite. And the more organizations that take part um, and start sharing their data, the more we can, the more data we can share, the more we can share skills, the more we can build tools. And we can start to align our authority files and root out errors in our data, create cleaner, richer data that eventually we'll start building this global data set that we can all um, share and contribute to together. And that has massive potential um, for all sorts of areas, but particularly for improving citations and access to knowledge on Wikipedia. So I hope that, hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah, I think that's, um, I mean, those, those examples are so, uh, wonderful to see um, those visualizations and I think really helps um, helps us understand the the sort of impacts of adding that structured data and I think it is really exciting to think about being able to to then intermix all of those different uh, points of data to, to get really interesting um, pictures of, of the world and I want to then um, circle back to something Jason you mentioned at the beginning of your talk around um, moving your data into Wikidata then allows you to interface with that data in Welsh. And to think about the connections between um, equity and language and how working in, in Wikidata actually allows for support of multilingual communities, of um, smaller language communities or cultural revitalization. And I wonder if you can talk about all the work that you're doing in the context of um, language support and cultural revitalization. Sure. So, yeah, as we've kind of alluded to, Wikidata is multilingual. You can apply a label and a description in any language, um, or any of the 300 languages that are in sort of in the Wiki ecosystem at present, to a Wikidata item, and th and that means that you can view a lot of data in lots of different languages, whereas perhaps the input 
data was just in one single language. So for us, that's, that's fantastic in terms of being able to create and share and engage people with Welsh language data. And that's really important to the National Library. It's also really important to the Welsh government who funded a number of our projects. Um, they, they funded the Sum of All Welsh Literature project from their Welsh language um, digital department because they, they can really see the benefit of, of, of creating this kind of um, database of, of Welsh language data online uh, in terms of kind of the future of the language. Um, we, once we've created this Welsh language data, we try and encourage engagement as much as possible. So we host um, editathons, we host an annual um, hackathon with a real focus on trying to encourage people to reuse content data that's, that's Welsh language or in the Welsh language, create Welsh language applications um, with the data that we've shared. And this all kind of helps the Welsh language survive and, and thrive in a, in a digital setting. And Wales, Wales was essentially, essentially a, an oppressed colony of England for a, the best part of a thousand years. <laughs> um, and it's only really, it's hard to believe, you know, it, only in the last 50 years has Welsh been officially recognised as, as a language in Wales. Um, so exposing data for Welsh books and authors and publishers through Wikidata on an open platform and, and feeding into the Wikisite initiative encourages the use of sources written in Welsh or from a Welsh perspective as we start to try and decolonize our recorded history. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's so important in considering how uh, how histories or how literatures um, can be more findable and even just being able to work in in a language is so important. I know that oftentimes so much of our bibliographic um, universe is in is in English or is in standardized languages in such a way that that um, we have to encounter um, culture through through a different language and so um, I think that that's really important to recognize um, the importance that Wikidata presents in that way, because you are are encoding in a in a way that's not tied to language, yeah. um, and so that's I think um, really important for the international um, context. Um, and I wonder, Simon, if you want to provide some some reflections from your perspective on on this topic. Yeah, a recent example, I've been doing some editing relating to the Kingdom of Demonia, um, which is an extinct Celtic nation that's um, located in the southwest of England, covering the counties of Cornwall and Devon um, primarily. Um, I've discovered that um, many of the early references to the kings of Demonia are in the Welsh manuscripts, and Jason had created the Penaeth manuscript collection. So we've got this corpus of um, texts that are supporting the existence of these early kings of this nation that no longer exists. So we've got this, um, this connection to heritage. And it's not one that we went out and looked for. It's just one that is there because we put those texts into Wikidata. Um, so by adding the references, for example, that a king was born in a year, we are creating a connection to the manuscripts and then we can write queries um, and we can show how the manuscripts support the, um, the, this lost knowledge that, that was contained in the, in the kingdom that used to exist. Um, it's just quite a nice example that I happened across recently or quite inadvertently. So. Well, and I think it's a nice example of two of the ways that when uh, when you have the data, when you have the metadata, when it's there, you can um, reuse it or use it in all different kinds of ways, depending depending on what you want to do. So, so the more the more data that's in Wikidata, the more more things we can we can find out and do with that data. So, um, picking up on on that idea of of um, sort of moving into the future. Uh, Jason, I wonder if you can let us know if you have any um, upcoming plans um, for the National Library. Um, we've always got 
projects in the pipeline. <laughs> um, and Wikidata is, is really at the heart of our strategy now um, for Wikimedia at the library, whereas it, initially it was more focused on Wikipedia and, and Wikimedia Commons. Wikidata, now there's an element of it in every project that we do. Um, so we'll be continuing to develop our printed collections data, um, working on publishers and authors. And, and ultimately, I'd like to see Wikidata IDs in our catalogue, um, you know, systematically shared to align our catalogue entries with, with what's on Wikidata. And that's kind of like the, the ultimate goal. Uh, but in the meantime, there's, there's lots of projects going. I've just started a project um, to share the Welsh chapels database. Um, chapels in Wales are disappearing at the rate of one a week. So we want to share that data and make that available and encourage people to go out and, and photograph them and so on. Um, but making that data available openly and, and again through the medium of Welsh on, on Wikidata is, is something that, that we and the Welsh government are really keen on. So um, speaking to the, to the community that um, might be engaging with this video, uh, what would you be on your wish list for the Wikidata and library community if you could, if you could ask, um, uh, invite people to engage um, in something uh, specific? So I'd love to see a more developed collaborative effort for documenting and um, developing strategy for engagement with Wikidata and, and Wikisite specifically and, and the pooling of um, resources really to develop more useful tools. I think the more we work together, the, the better this, will, this whole thing will become. Um, and tools, tools would be top of my wish list too, really. Many libraries don't have or, or can't spare coders and developers to work on this, this kind of work. Um, but they may have a lot of other skills that they can bring to the table. So it's, I think it's really important that those that do have that capacity um, can help contribute to developing new tools um, that, that will make life easier for everyone in, in sharing our data with, with Wikidata or Wikibase. And so um, I guess if you can, if you can reflect on this, what you, where you see a role for IFLA or the International Library Community, I think you already um, um, mentioned that a little bit in your, in your last answer, but if you have any further thoughts. Yeah, so I think IFLA and, and the, the wider library community have a really important role to play. Um, I think one of the things that they could do is, is you know, the, the more people that explore the possibility of Wikidata um, or Wikisite with their own collections um, and share those experiences and produce case studies, the more it's going to start to have a snowball effect and we can get more and more people um, involved in this. Um, and I think as many of us are thinking about digital transformation in our organizations, which I know a lot of us are at the moment, um, and looking really closely at long established, possibly outdated workflows, um, I think this is a the perfect opportunity to really think about how we can um, incorporate this kind of approach in, in developing the the way that we look at digital in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think you. I think you're um, right on on that. And then um, Simon, and I wonder if you could let us know uh, what you've been working on, um, and any anything also to pick up on what Jason was talking about. Uh, if you want to offer some reflections as well. Mm -hmm. So recently the big um, task that I've finished is another batch of checking which um, author items have been harvested from ORCID but don't have the employer claim. So I've checked over a million items and was able to add employers to 1,800 or so, um, which took about a month. It's quite a time consuming process to go through that. Um, and it's about the third time I've done it now, I think. Um, so I wish other people would get involved in that, just if anyone's listening who likes doing that sort of thing. Um, but it's really beneficial because that helps with author disambiguation. Um, and it also means we just don't have such sparse items that are essentially just a human with an ORCID identifier, um, which doesn't offer much benefit beyond 
what you'd find in a library catalogue really as we start to enrich these items there's really a lot more benefit and you can almost build up scholarly profiles so it could be a lot of benefit for academic librarians getting involved in this area as well for um, measuring impact and um, other bibliometric work um, other than that um, I'm currently working on a batch of about 10,000 items that were created by a, the mix and match tool um, from the National Library of Wales archive and manuscript collection which don't really match exactly or they're very sparse so I'm trying to do a lot of tidying upon that and um, doing merging and trying to get them into something a bit more useful and I hope that's going to give us a lot of um, organisations and people that aren't already in Wikidata when that's finished. Um, they're two of the big projects I'm working on at the moment. There's always little things. I enjoy going out and taking photographs of cultural heritage for Wikidata items. Um, hoping to start a project with my local museum in the not too distant future. So there's plenty to keep me busy. Thank you. Yeah, there's always, always lots, always lots of, I always like look at things and I think, oh no, don't, don't look at that area that requires, requires work. So, uh, <laughs> so that's great. Um, and I guess as, uh, sort of we move into this, um, last section as a last reflection. Um, if there would be anything you would do differently, um, I think as we mentioned off the, off the beginning, I mean, that you were some of the very first, um, I think, um, uh, folks to get involved um, from a library, the library side. And so is there, is there, is there anything you would, you would change or maybe do differently in terms of helping um, other libraries go forward um, with this work? Um, so I wish, I wish I'd come up with a clear strategy early on, you know, to identify which collections uh, were likely to have good connections between them. Um, and, and plan longer term for our contributions to Wikidata. I feel like the work that we've done that kind of developed quite organically um, kind of worked quite well, but I would definitely recommend to anyone starting now to really think about what it is they want to get out of sharing data with Wikidata. What is it they want back? Is it, is it making connections? Is it data enrichment is it um, correcting errors that kind of thing and and develop a strategy around that because that's really going to influence where you where you put your resources and, and just streamline the whole process um, um, other than that i think part of me wishes i'd trained as a developer <laughs> that might sound a bit weird but i think that the point i'm trying to make there is it's only really at the end point when you see a nice user interface that a lot of people actually get what Wikidata is all about and really understand the power of it. Um, so I'm always struggling to find people to make things for us, uh, and, you know, or um, adapt things that work with our collection so that we can show um, a kind of finished product. This is what you can do. These are the kind of things that we can now do with Wikidata. So, um, yeah, that would be one of my one of my tips. Yes, I often wish I had more coding skills and developers <laughs> or skills or or you sound like the way I feel sometimes about mark coding. I see all this potential uh, unused by, <laughs> by library systems. So so I think that's um, you know I think that in the link data community certainly being able to see those. Um, those end results is, is a really important uh, part of demonstrating um, why this work is, is needed and important. Um, and Simon, do you have any, any reflections? Not, not to end on a pain point. I sort of feel like we're ending, <laughs> ending on, a, on maybe, <laughs> but it's optimistically, uh, you know, for those who might, um, might be starting out, is, are there things that, that you might do differently? The when I reflect on some of the um, things I did when I was first working with Wikidata, yeah, there's so much I would do differently, but it would be harsh to say I should have done it differently because in all honesty at that time, I didn't have the skills. I just, it was part of the learning process. So some of the things were very long-winded or they weren't the right approach. 
but you've got to make mistakes if you're going to learn. You've got to be brave and just try things. Um, so I, I wouldn't say I've got regrets. If I could go back with the skills I've got now and do things differently, I could save a lot of time, but I can't. So I'm just happy with where I've got to, with having had the opportunities that I've had. And a lot of that's um, down to working with the National Library of Wales and having this partnership that's given me the opportunity to attend conferences and make friends all around the world. Um, pragmatically, if we could do one thing differently, I'd probably push to set up a wiki base for the book's work because it would have made things so much easier than trying to fit it into the existing wiki data. And I don't think that's necessarily something I've done differently. I think it's something we might try in the future if the opportunity arises. That's great. Thank you. Um, I, I think I, uh, we've come to the end of the, of the questions that, um, that I had specifically, but I, I do want to thank you both um, before we move into to questions from the rest of our group. But um, I think, Simon, what you said, be brave and try things is probably, you know, a, a phrase that can take us through all of the work, certainly um, in working with, with Wikidata. And uh, it really is about, I mean, I know that the, the, the phrase I think is be bold, but I think be bold and be brave. Um, and, and don't be afraid to, to fail because you probably will. Uh, but that's okay, because every time we do, we learn, we learn um, new and different things. And uh, I wanna thank you both um, just for, for sharing all of those, those uh, thoughts with us. Um, and now I'm gonna open it up to um, other, other folks who may have questions. And um, yes, so uh, Kareem, would you like to ask a question? Sure, I just want to um, thank uh, both uh, Jason and Simon, first of all, for sharing so candidly their, you know, um, expertise and failures, which uh, is a great way of learning. I agree with that too. Now, um, uh, there were a couple of points that resonated with me because I work with, um, 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 for equity of knowledge as well, and for a marginalized uh, language corpus. And uh, I have sensed a few sentiments that I'll uh, kind of uh, explain and set the stage for and ask you a question if Wikidata, uh, what would be the strategy uh, for those kind of um, projects? So what I've sensed is that there's, um, when you work with uh, communities with um, marginalized knowledge, there is sense of um, sacredness uh, sometimes or sensitivities around the collections. Uh, on the community side, and when you come to the library side, there's this passion to help and share, but there's the disconnect between, uh, or the fear on the library side to um, maybe um, share something that was not supposed to share, and then on the fear on the community side for, for opening or losing control of their collection. So these two dynamics kind of create this gap where there's no action. And I wonder if uh, there is a strategy that we could um, use uh, Wikidata for to bring these two camps together to move forward. One of the things I was thinking was, is creating a local instance of Wikibase, is that a way of uh, going forward? And if lots of people start doing that, is there, is there a benefit of creating islands and not uh, having connections? Does that kind of make sense? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll try and sort of, yeah, unpick some of that a bit. Um, yeah, this kind of fear of of sharing knowledge and losing control of of knowledge. I've I've heard people talking about this. I know in New Zealand, for example, indigenous communities are very wary of sharing their their content um, and their knowledge with Wikipedia and and, and perhaps Wikidata. We don't have that problem so much in Wales. Um, from my experience in Wales, people are, you know, naturally very proud of their language, their their history, and they are really keen to to share it and preserve it. and And that actually acts as a driver for for getting content um, onto Wikipedia and and Wikidata. Um, so we kind of try and tap into that as much as possible to to mobilise communities to um, get involved in in our projects. Um, there are obviously some issues that crop up. One of the biggest problems that we, we come across is 
Wikidata doesn't like describing people's nationality as Welsh. They, they say, well, no, you're, you're British. You can't be Welsh. Wales isn't a country by Wikidata's definition of, of a country. Um, and we've had to kind of negotiate with them, well, can, can we be a nation? <laughs> Which kind of seems like, you know, second rate. Um, so, so there's definitely issues and it would be nice if, you know, communities had more say over certain aspects of, you know, just if they're describing people from, from their community, why can't they say that they're Welsh? You know, um, there, there should be the means to do that within Wikidata. Um, and I think I think it's it will move in that direction more. Um, I think people generally on Wikidata are fairly understanding of, of these issues, and it's just trying to find solutions that that fit the data structure um, that that we can use. Um, so that's one of the things that we've that we've um, come across. Thank you uh, for that. So. Um... Yes, another way of putting it is that um, I know uh, Wikidata is heralded as a tool for sharing data. Mm -hmm. Does it play a role in preservation or safeguarding? Because that's the area where both sides come together, one from the risk aversion side and the other from safeguarding side, right? So what is the role of Wikidata in, in a digital preservation, perhaps? Yep, I think it's it's got a really important role. Um, there's a lot of work that happens in cultural heritage in, in Wales and I'm sure in lots of other settings where you've got, you know, small institutions, limited resources. There are websites that for projects, um, for example, that, that come and go and data is, is then, you know, it's once that website is gone, all that information or that data that was collected as part of a community project um, can disappear. And I think by putting it into Wikidata, with the kind of solid infrastructure that is there already and doesn't need funding <laughs> locally, you know, it's, it's, it's all funded centrally and it's, it's kind of looked after. It seems like it makes a lot of sense to put, put that data in Wikidata to help preserve it. I mean, if you look at the Welsh language, for example, it's, it almost acts as a dictionary for, for any language because you can, you can see uh, translations, for, for words and terms and you can use use properties to kind of um, you know build up this this description so just in terms of recording and preserving words and and terms in the Welsh language I think Wikidata is really important and and that's going back to your earlier question that I didn't really answer about you know perhaps using local instances of Wikibase as a way of solving some of the issues that, that might crop up on Wikidata. That's, that's my one concern with doing that on a big scale and having all sorts of l local um, Wikibases is that you, you lose that um, ability to preserve for the long term because each, each database needs um, looking after on its own. Um, they might not all talk to each other very well. I, there's, there's promises that all, all the Wikibases will, will interact and talk to each other and will be queryable, but there's a lot of challenges there. Um, and there's, there's no, no guarantee that you're going to be able to sort of um, access data across all these databases. So that would be my one reservation with, um, with sort of going full on into using lots of different Wikibases for these things. I think, um, it's a very good point that Jason's making. But the flip side of that is we can't all put our data into the main instance of Wikidata. It just it's not going to scale quickly enough for us to do that, unfortunately. So um, the Wikibase instance solution is quite a it's a necessary step, I would say, for everyone to be able to carry on contributing. Um, and just to touch on digital preservation, um, I mentioned earlier that. Wikidata can store deprecated um, statements about uh, persistent identifiers. Well, an another way we can use deprecated statements or preferred rankings is to store competing claims. Um, we don't have to just have one version of the truth. We can um, store multiple different um, claims about a, diff about a subject. So if there's different views on the matter, we're, we are able to try and deal with that. And I think that's an excellent um, 
feature of Wikidata in terms of digital preservation. We're not just storing one version of the truth. We can collect statements from all over the place and bring them together. And um, everything Jason said about the infrastructure then comes into play. We can store all this knowledge in a place where hopefully it will persist. Great. I don't know, that makes a lot of sense. and and gives us a way forward. So thank you. Thank you for clarifying that for me. I think uh, um, Miguel had a question. Hey, Miguel. I do. Hi. Um, thank you, Jason and Simon, for sharing uh, all, all that information to us. Uh, I would like to, to, to ask you something on another approach. Uh, we all know that, for example, catalogs work um, most of the time as silos on, on the internet, mostly because the mark language is, is old. <laughs> I, I think that's one of the problems. And uh, most, although many libraries are already adopting new, new, new sets for, for um, describing um, books and, and documents and so on, um, I think the web and especially um, uh, web, web crawlers and, and like Google, for example, don't like that language. So they don't get on the web as we know it when, when we try to search something. So what are your thoughts about putting all these bibliographic records on Wikidata? Because uh, I think that's a good um, schema for the web. Right, so I, I think we will we'll, we'll enjoy very much to have all that at uh, its disposal, and and if you have any idea on um, how these records then um, made those elements more visible to the library, do do you have any any idea of all your work at the National Library of Welsh? Uh, relates to the, the impact of um, um, the, the, the searches or um, the visualizations of the digital objects. That's my question. Um, okay, good question. So yeah, as you say, if you you know try and search for a, a book in a catalog on Google, it might not might not come up. Well, I remember one of the the very first. Um, introduction I had to Wikidata, I, had, I sat down and had a conversation with the trainer and he was saying, you know, Google are using Wikidata in to help searches um, and none of us really understand quite how they're doing that or to what extent, but it's, it's clearly happening. There's evidence that they are using Wikidata to, to help um, find things on the, on the web and to make things more visible and to find answers to your questions and so on. So in that regard, I think that there's a massive benefit for having content in Wikidata. Um, particularly we've found for visual content that's also on Commons, if it's in Commons, it's on Wikidata, it's really discoverable. You know, you put in the name of a painting or you know you, you search subject, our, our content comes up a lot. One of the problems we've got at the moment though is that it's very difficult to track the impact of this work. You know, we can we can see if our images are used in Wikipedia pages, um, but we can't see how, how this data is being used more widely. We, we can't track how Google's using it or how often things appear in search results, for example. And it would be really great to have that kind of data and get a better understanding um, of, of how that's being used on the web, how people might want to use it or access it. Um, because theoretically, you know, those Wikidata items, they give a pathway back to our catalogue and we want to tap into that as much as we can. I think in terms of web discoverability, um, it's quite a subjective um, observation really. Um, I've noticed that Google doesn't always make the connections between its, um, its knowledge panels um, Google book entries and Wikidata items. So I think there might need to be some more curation to make all the connections necessary to get everything working nicely. Or hopefully Google will do that curation and it won't have to be us. But um, at the moment, everything's a little bit disjointed with the Wikidata book items. Thank you. That's great, thank you. And I think um, um, Katerina has our, our last question. 
of our of our session. Yes, hi. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question is about impact. Uh, what um, can you talk about a specific Wikidata based project that you worked on that you think was the most impactful or a specific example that for you illustrates the value of Wikidata for libraries? Okay. Um, yeah, so for me, um, I mentioned the, the, work, the work that we did on artworks that were already in Wikimedia Commons and creating Wikidata for those. So that's, that, that's one example is creating that user interface at the end um, and being able to kind of go through the whole process of sharing data and round tripping it to create an interface that helps improve the experience of, of, of our users as, as a library. So that's, that's one example. Another one is I, I mentioned, um, I showed on some of my slides, the work that we'd done around the Dictionary of Welsh Biography. Um, and what we've done recently with that is the Dictionary of Welsh Biography website has been revamped. And we've actually pulled in at the bottom of every article in the Dictionary of Welsh Biography now, we have external links and you can link to um, things like Biaf records. You can link to the Wikipedia article for that person. And that data all comes from Wikidata. And we, we run it once, once or twice a month and, and update it and make sure we've got all the links. Um, and moving that forward, we then developed a timeline that an interactive timeline of everyone in the Dictionary of Welsh Biography um, that you can filter by occupation, where someone was born, their religion, you know, all sorts of different things. And that, again, that's powered entirely by the Wikidata. So I think th these kind of end products that, that are actually powered by the Wikidata and wouldn't be possible without the Wikidata are, are the kind of things that I think of in terms of the, the biggest impact that we've had so far. In terms of the, the, the work with the books, I think there's a massive potential for impact down the line, but I don't think we're there yet in terms of having a really big impact with that work. I think we're just laying the groundwork at the moment, really, in terms of sharing bibliographic data. Yes, I agree about the books. I think um, we can do something with it in the future, but this is just the first ingest of um, a few thousand books, really. Um, we either need to continue and grow that corpus, or we need to focus on improving it and adding more detail to really start getting impact out of it, I think. Thanks. Yeah, um, it just strikes me that, that a lot of this has so much to do with scale and deciding between um, how granular you want to get with your... What I love about Wikidata is the ability to get really granular about stuff, add all kinds of things you can't necessarily add um, in the course of cataloging in a library. On the other hand, um, you can really add mass amounts of, of uh, uh, data, which um, leads to all kinds of questions. So I could, of course, and I'm sure all of us could ask many, many more questions of you both um, because of your, your such uh, depth of knowledge and experience in, in working with Wikidata. And, and so I want to thank you both again for, for joining us um, for this uh, discussion and talk. I think your, your work um, for both of you has been so uh, valuable for the community in demonstrating what's possible um, from both uh, very practical levels, but also seeing how the projects can be implemented and being able to see that sort of end, end goal of what you can do um, with that, with that, um, with that data. So thank you both um, very much. And I want to thank everyone for, for joining us um, um, for this discussion. And uh, we look forward to uh, more in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.